I have been a closet cross-dresser for more than 50 years. I had only been found out once, by my wife, who made it clear she thought I was perverted. I worked for a major bank in the UK and in the 70s worked away from home Mondays to Fridays for two and a half years giving me plenty of opportunities to be Allison. About two years before I retired I decided to set up a false email address and website as Allison and be based in San Francisco. I had been to San Francisco on holiday with my wife on a couple of occasions so if necessary I could speak about the city with a degree of confidence. When I sent the email I set the time on my computer back eight hours so as to reinforce the impression it had been sent from San Francisco. The fake email was sent to 18 recipients, 16 fictitious, one to my wife and the other to me in a further false name, Lisa which I thought sounded American. The email read, Hi ladies. Linda gave me your email addresses thinking you may be interested in my story and what I did after I caught my husband cross-dressed. He is 54 and when I caught him he was wearing totally, for his age, inappropriate purple satin g-string panties that barely covered his naughty bits. He also had on a matching half-cup bra with feet cutouts revealing his nipples. A purple frilly garter belt and black nylon stockings completed the not very feminine look. He looked like what he was. A man in woman's lingerie. I was furious but kept myself from overreacting. I asked him how long he had been wearing women's underwear and why. He said he had been wearing lingerie for around five years and that it turned him on. I decided there and then to allow him to wear lingerie but on my terms. He would wear old-fashioned styles mainly from the early 60s. I was determined he would not be in competition with me. I have attached three images showing what he looks like now in his lingerie. I found my husband is much more docile now and does his share of the domestic duties around the home. In fact, I often have him dressed as a maid, but that's a story for another time. Maybe you should dress your husband similarly. I can assure you I think it will be very worthwhile. I had found the three images on the Flickr website. They were all of the same crossdresser whom I guessed was in his late 40s. In each case, the crossdresser was wearing a wig and makeup. The first image showed him wearing coral pink nylon panties, matching brassiere and garter belt with black stockings and pink heels. The bra cups were filled with breast forms normally used by ladies who have had a mastectomy. The second image showed the same crossdresser, this time wearing a pale pink full-length nylon slip. The slip was trimmed with lace around the hem and bust and you could just see the outline of his black bra and panties through the thin nylon. Again, he's wearing black stockings. In both these images he's wearing low heels. The next image shows the man wearing a long white nylon nightgown which has puff sleeves and is slightly transparent. I waited for a response from my wife. Nothing. To say I was disappointed was an understatement. It was seven weeks later something happened. It was a Friday and I got up to prepare to go to work by taking a shower. I always took my clothes into the shower so that I was fully dressed ready for breakfast. Today as I went to the drawer for my underpants I found it was full of panties. Most, I noticed, were of the full-cut nylon brief style although as I quickly rummaged through the pile I saw a few pairs of French knickers, briefs and directoire knickers, bloomers. Most of the panties were white, but a number was in other colors, particularly pink and black. I was surprised also to see three pairs of schoolgirl knickers, bottle green, navy blue, and brown. Wow. I decided to make an albeit weak protest to my wife about where my pants were, but she either was asleep or more likely ignored me. So having no choice, I took a pair of white full-cut panties in with me to the shower. After showering and drying, I slipped the knickers on. I was in heaven. It was wonderful and it took much effort to stop myself coming in them. Apart from the panties, I dressed as normal for work, had breakfast, made the wife a cup of tea and then drove to work at the bank. I felt sure all my staff knew I was wearing panties, but of course they didn't. That first night my wife and I had dinner in virtual silence. We went to bed at the usual time and I found my pajamas that were normally under my pillow gone to be replaced with a double layer knee length turquoise nylon nightdress. I again thought better to protest so I put it on. Again I got hard. 
That night my wife slept with her back to me. However, I was in heaven, it seemed the email was at last paying off. The next day I again wore a pair of white panties. Over the next few weeks I always wore panties although I tried the French knickers and once, because it was very cold, I wore the pink nylon directoire knickers. The latter initially felt odd coming down to below my knees but after a while I quite liked wearing them. I still thought my staff must be aware I was wearing ladies' panties especially the females. Then my socks disappeared to be replaced with stockings and suspender belts, the latter in mostly white but other colors as well. There were plain ones, frilly ones, and some were broad with satin panels at the front. Most had four suspenders but one or two had six or eight suspenders. After initially having difficulty in clipping the belts behind my back I realized it was easier to put them on back to front and then slide them round. The stockings were mostly 30 denier but a few pairs were 15 denier. I knew I had to be extra careful with the latter. Once again I felt I was being watched at work so I was careful to ensure my trousers did not ride up revealing I was wearing stockings. I hoped the suspenders could not be seen through my trousers. Again a few weeks passed before the next items of female underwear appeared in my drawers. All my vests had disappeared to be replaced with camisoles, caminickers, teddies, and slips, both full-length and waist-length varieties. All were as usual made of soft nylon and most were lace-trimmed. This was now getting serious. I could only hide the fact I was wearing camisoles or full-length slips by wearing thicker shirts. And of course wearing slips was not too practical. I still wore old-fashioned nylon nightdresses at night usually ankle length but on one occasion a see-through baby doll with matching panties. It was about this time my nipples started to itch and I was having mood swings. My wife couldn't be could she. I was also having difficulty in getting hard. We had long ceased to have sex. She could. Somehow she was having female hormones. Some eight months after the panties appeared bras appeared. I knew this was likely to happen but it still shocked me. My wife now expected me to wear bras to work. All were well padded so I would have a big bust which I would find extremely difficult to hide. There were also a few breasts formed so that I achieved more realistic breasts that moved around as I walked. I was now very concerned I would be discovered at work wearing women's underwear. If I was discovered no one said anything. I was now 58 and had been wearing women's underwear to work for more than a year. It was just after my birthday my wife announced we had an appointment with the bank's HR people next week. She would not say why we were seeing HR. At the appointed time we were ushered into the HR manager's office. The manger was about my age and wore a rather frumpy woolen dress. I was wearing red caminickers trimmed with black lace that could be clearly seen through my white shirt. If my wife wanted to humiliate me she succeeded. I was also wearing a well-filled black bra and matching suspender belt and stockings. My wife did all the talking. I don't know if anyone in John's department has said anything but he's been wearing women's underwear as a prelude to transitioning to be a woman he has to live as a woman for at least a year before he can have surgery. But then I expect you know that. The HR manager nodded she did. He will be coming to work from a date you suggest, which I hope will be soon, dressed completely as a woman and that will include makeup and hair. I'm sure that's not likely to be a problem but I do need to alert John's staff as to what's going to happen and draw their attention to the bank's rules concerning his transitioning and the consequences if anyone causes problems. Thank you for your understanding, my wife said. The HR lady suggested I start as a woman Monday week. My wife readily agreed. I could believe what I had just heard. My wife was to make me live and work as a woman 24-7. After leaving the bank we went to various charity shops where I had to buy dresses, skirts, blouses, jumpers, cardigans and shoes most of which were suitable for my work as a manager at the bank. We also visited a specialist wig shop where I was fitted with four wigs appropriate to my age. This meant three of them were tightly permed. The day I started work dressed as a woman seemed to come very quickly. My wife drove me to work that day, something she rarely did. I was wearing pink underwear, 
bra, panties, suspender, waist slip, and tan stockings. Over the underwear I had on a pink blouse that clearly showed I was wearing a well-filled bra and a brown pleated skirt. My wife had done my modest makeup and to complete my appearance on my head was a permed brunette wig and feet a pair of two-inch brown heels. My wife had acquired gold wedding and engagement rings and these were on the third finger of my left hand. Evidently she wanted me to be a married woman and at work I was known as Mrs. Allison Woodcock. Very apprehensively, I went to work in my office on the appointed Monday. Not long afterwards, my deputy manager knocked on my door. Good morning, Mrs. Woodcock. Good morning, Alice. What can I do for you? On behalf of myself and all the staff, I just want to wish you all the best in your new life. A nice sentiment or more likely a subtle way of saying she did not approve of what I was doing. The staff's reaction was mixed, but somewhat interesting. The young girls were more interested in my dated clothes, with one even having the audacity of asking if I was wearing similarly dated underwear. The older female members of staff were more interested in whether I had a love life. I found this embarrassing. The male members ignored me, although the looks on some of their faces suggested disgust. Eighteen months later, I was offered early retirement. My wife made me accept it. On the day of my retirement, my staff held a leaving due for me. Alice said I understand you are going to Mexico for a holiday in two weeks. I've been to Cancun and enjoyed it very much. I hope you will too. She placed much emphasis on that last sentence. OMG. Now I knew why my wife had insisted on me commuting the maximum amount of my pension. She had arranged sex change surgery for me. That wasn't what I wanted when I sent the fake email.